Salud. Salud. Vámonos, César. Vámonos. Let's get it, ¿no? Ah, yes. Hacía sí. falta getting back together and talking footy. Hacía falta. We had to do it to him. We did get together and talk footy and watch footy this weekend. Hey, for real? Yeah, we had a tailgate, folks, this past weekend. Nos llovió. Nos llovió, pero... ¿Qué se puede hacer, no? Siguió el party. Cuando la madre naturaleza pues más no quiere. Dos mojados allá Two afuera. years in a row... Where this LAFC Levi Stadium match rains on our parade. I know, but you know, thankful for you guys who came out. Yeah, We're still popping during the rain. We're the few, the proud. But then once it stopped raining, de repente se llegó el gentilal. Se dejó llevar la gente. Even the neighbors were like, "Hey, shots are was good, right?" Oh, the ones that were right next to, us. to you. I thought you went out to them. Uh, well, I gave them a beer. Okay. Because they were just cool vibes on the side. And then they were like telling you how much they love footy. They like podcasts. The guy supposedly was going to follow us. If you are, shout out to you, homie. He did. He did. I, I got one of the guys. I got their phone. And he's like, put it in, in my phone. And Hell yeah. Knows. Let's go. Um, One of them was an LAFC fan. And I was like, eh, tu madre, cabrón. <laughs> Give me that beer back. <laughs> Give me that beer. <laughs> I, did, I think I was like, eh. Like joking. Um, no, but uh, people around us were good vibes. Uh, and yeah, a lot of people showed up. The usual, right? The los que nunca faltan. Shout out to you guys. Shout también. Out to y'all. A bunch of uh, gold sided scarves out there too that I seen. Bruh, for real. In our pictures, I saw a couple, and I was like, "Hey, let's go." Um, my wife, she got recognized at, uh, by the bathrooms by a homie of mine. Oh but boy. but he was like, "Hey, how do you guys know the podcast?" And then uh, sh- my sister was like, "She's married to the co host." And then the guys, like, "Oh, that's my homie. Uh, we uh-huh. played soccer in a." Uh, in college, uh, intramural, nice. boy, the boy Pepe, shout out to you for noticing the scarf and, and being like, hey, yeah, no, but yeah, ahí vamos, creciendo ahí gente, vamos. we're being recognized somehow, some way, so we appreciate all of you guys for tuning in. Heck yeah, and then shout out to those that were the first time going to our tailgates. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, shout out to you guys. Hopefully Good seeing you guys. Come, come to the next one. Yeah, but as we want to keep growing, folks, what we'll ask of you guys Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Um, share us with a friend. Uh, share our social media with a friend. We post some funny clips on there, at least. Um, yeah, whatever you guys can do to get our name out would really help because that's how we're growing. We're growing more and more. Yep. Uh, the tailgates will get better and better. We have some great plans for the summer uh, when Copa America is here. Uh, we're really planning for that stuff. We got merch coming very soon. We're cooking. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys love everything that we're doing footy-wise and uh, come along for the ride. Hell yeah. Let's get it. Welcome back, folks, to episode 104 of Goal Sided. Super excited for this jam-packed agenda for you guys. We got some top news. I think uh, most of the news, though, is on the matches, man. We had an amazing uh, semifinals to the Champions League that wrapped up today. So we'll go over that. Um, The EPL is coming to the final two weeks. A couple teams have three matches. But for the most part, two, uh, two matches left. Spain, it's all but wrapped up. Ya se acabó. Ya van a llorar los de Barcelona. Netherlands, Serie A has been done in a, for a while now. So. Yeah. Uh, Liga Mekis is also coming oh, to a yeah. close. Well, it's just getting started, right? Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit. And if you guys like Pick'ems, we have our episodes, our exclusive Pick'ems episodes over at Goals TV. We'll still be talking Liga Mekis here, of course. Um, but yeah, if you guys want, uh, if you guys want more content, head over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it, folks. Uh, in top news, the first thing we want to talk about, uh, a little bit close to us, uh, Liga Mekis Mexican player fans' hearts, Cesar Montes, el famoso Cesar Montes, el cachorro. He's playing over at Almería. He was going viral because he was calling out Mexican footy, saying what we've all been saying, what we've all been hearing from a lot of people, that um, basically uh, they're not prepared enough in Liga Mekis. They don't. Liga Mekis teams don't do the best in uh, facilitating their exit to Europe, even if the players want to go to Europe. Yeah, He was talking about how hard it was for him at Monterrey. I think he made a really snarky, quick remark where he said, que nos venden muy caros. Yeah. Right? Which is crazy as a play. Like, 
the person being sold transferred to be like, bro, I'm not worth that much. That's kind of an interesting take. Yeah, but I think the the whole idea with his take is just saying, making it realistic to what everyday fans can. I mean, we've known this, but making it more human when it comes from him. Yep. From somebody who's actually lived it. Um, he kept mentioning how um, in Mexico, a lot of people just worry. They got families already. You know, some 18, 19-year-olds have families. So that's what they worry about. They worry about the, the contracts to be set for life type of contracts mm -hmm. in Liga Mekis that they don't, in segundo plano, or maybe in the back of the heads, they're like, oh, well, if, if it's right, then I'll go to Europe if yep. it happens. If not, at least I got a contract here. But it's crazy because, like, you can tell, my guy, that contract that you just signed is making you never go to Europe. Yeah. Like a Kevin Alvarez. Yeah. America paid, what, $11 million for him? America, it's a business. They have to sell for more than that. And a European team's not going to pay for that. Yeah. They pay that for you. No, right. They're always gonna opt for like a South American, an Argentinian, Chileno, for five million, Brasileño, less, better, younger, and, and more experience. Like a lot of these teams have experience with those type of players from those locations, and they're like, "Well, maybe I shouldn't go for a Mexican who I've never had in my club and who's two times, two uh, times it, the price." Yeah, two times the price. It's like uh, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah talking a lot about how cushy it is for these players right yes they have the responsibilities of their family but at the same time he was mentioning how comfortable you can live in mexico yeah. playing in mexico right which is crazy we've talked about this internal market that there is in mexico where if you're a solid Liga Mickey's player you can be sold for high amounts of money which will feed your club a lot in transfer fee but then you can make millions yeah. on a club and uh, which is not something that a South American player that can do, a Central American player can do at their local clubs. That's why there's so much um, motivation to, to go, go to Europe. To go also, yeah. Right, yeah, because that's where you can make your money. And there's a lot of soccer players in Argentina that if you stay in Argentina, you're most likely just going to be average and people are going to look at you average. Mm -hmm. In Mexico, the, the Cesar Montes or like the Piojo Alvarados, they're like superstars. They have so much status. The Kevin Alvarez with this podcast, like, there's so much added more like benefit to staying in Mexico. Yeah. Why would you go be at the bottom of the totem pole, Kevin Alvarez specifically, yeah. like a nobody defender, like Jorge Sanchez, right? Just trying to make it work. One, you could stay in America, not get a lot of minutes, but be a superstar. Whatever concert you go to, you're getting filmed. Yep. Like you can make a podcast and be that you're the biggest boy toy there is yep. in footy, right? Mm. In what universe would he go to to England, wow. where the coach is going to be on his ass about how much he sucks and how much he has to get better? Yeah, and Layun talked about that. Mm -hmm. Layun also had an interview with the Record, and he was like, "Yo, when I went to Atalanta in Italy, like I had to learn the basic skills of how to defend. Yep. It almost felt like I was embarrassed of not knowing some fundamental skills." Um, when I went there, it's like I'd have to put extra work after practices because my coach was like, yo, you need to learn these before I even consider you. Yeah. And it's like, that's why they don't leave. They're way too comfortable. They don't ask much of, of or a soccer player once you already made it. Yeah. Once you're already there. I, I saw the Layun piece and my, my hot take, my response back to him is like, my guy, then we need people like you that have experienced that within the ranks of Mexican footy that can help supposedly change what you're also aligned with us in screaming that Mexico needs. Why are you in Kings League or whatever the hell, People's League? Because maybe he sees it and he's like, yo, like, what can I do? Like, there's so much money involved, so many politics and yeah, corruption. But the, it's like the moment that one person says, what can I do? It becomes a group think, right? Nobody will think that anything can be done, right? Yeah. It, there has to be that first domino that goes down, which is um, like a structural change, a, uh, putting more good soldiers in there than bad soldiers that can then start turning something around. Yeah. Right? And I think it would be uh, one of the solutions is to just flood the Federation with a lot of ex players that have played Europe the in Guardados, Europe. Right? Yeah. Uh, Guardado needs to jump in there. Rafa Marquez. If, if, uh, right. if he ever leaves the coaching world or while coaching, be an advisor. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, What's that? Uh, the Efrain Alvar, Efrain, Efrain Juarez. Juarez. Yeah. Who's also a coach in, in Europe, Belgium. Yeah. To come back. Yeah. All these players that are uh, that are risking 
uh, they're risking it for the biscuit. Basically, they're trying to do better. No, not motivated by money, right? He's not making a lot of money as an assistant no. coach in Belgium. Um, I bet you he he loves what he does. He like, loves what he does. Interesting and like, for, and he probably wants Mexican soccer to do better. Um, but also transitioning players from player to coach, which we're seeing. Did you see Henry yeah. Martin? Uh, is apparently doing coaching classes already. Um, they should. I and mean, that's what I would love of, of a Guardado. That's what I would love of uh, Chapito Montes, these like brainiacs, right? Yeah. Like uh, people that know the game, prepare yourself for after. You don't have to afterwards rely on uh, the Leyendas clubs, the U.S. and America. Or take an easy run, go be a pundit somewhere. And just or, be, yeah, or like be a pundit. Os- Osvaldo Sanchez's fucking take. Right? <laughs> or or making a podcast. Leave that up to us. Yeah, Come on. Bro. Let us let us get roasted on IG and shit, <laughs> not you. Um, but yeah. those are the things, I think, that are underlying in what Cesar Montes is saying. Uh, he's ultimately saying that he's going to stay at Almeria, even though they're go- they're relegated. They're going to second division. And he's getting fat contract, fat contracts thrown at him. America, Monterrey, Cruz Azul are asking him, "Hey, come back! You'll make millions. You'll be first division." And he's like, "No, I came to better myself. Right? I left for a reason, and it was so hard." Yeah, he's probably regretting taking that Monterrey contract. Um, and he, I feel like it's so easy to look up to their, to like the Guardados, like El Bajo con Deportivo La Coruña to second division. From there, he was able to stay and jump to, like, the Valencia, the Bayern, Leverkusen. And it's like, I feel like I, by him doing that, Cesar Montes, he's looking for something like that as well. Just yeah. staying longer. He's only, what, 26, so he's still got a couple years in. He's good. No, Yeah, and if he gets a solid season, I mean, yeah. we're seeing more and more the Barcelonas that are that are a little bit money strict, strict right now. Um, they can get him for a season, for two seasons, right? Which would be amazing for his career, amazing for the Selección. Same with right? Johan. Um, Johan stayed Vasquez, in yeah. Italy. It's like Cremonese for a season, stayed in Serie A. Those are the, doing good. the lessons in footy that you learn that are priceless, right? But a lot of players just don't risk it to even try that, right? And that's what Cesar Montes is saying. Come out here. Give it a go. Pero va a pasar, pues quien sabe. Uh, next in top news. Marco Royce is rumored to MLS. Marco Royce, who uh, is going to be playing uh, European Cup yep. final, final, Champions League final at Wembley. At Wembley, the biggest of stages can possibly win. It can leave a Champions League champion and possibly come straight to the MLS. That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. That'd I mean, be really good for MLS. Everyone was like Messi coming as a as a uh, World, World Cup, Cup champion. Uh, Thiago Almada, that MLS has now two MLS, uh, two World Cup champions currently there, and then possibly having a, a somebody fresh off uh, winning Champions. Champions League would be huge. That'd be huge. Uh, he's rumored to go to St. Louis with his old teammate Berkey, the goalkeeper. I think it would be it'd be good for MLS. I mean, I wish he would come to to the Quakes. Ah, uh, no. Pues, pues no. I mean, it, he seems a player that maybe isn't as flashy. So maybe he'd like a smaller. Smaller, even though sounds he's fucking bigger than all these cities. It is, but like a smaller club, por decir. But damn, bro, don't roast those guys for saying. I, I mean, what else can I say? Honestly, it's is he gonna come to San Jose? Tell no, me, no, no, no. Right, no. You need the teams that are hot with the funding, hot with the spending right now. That's not San Jose. They just spent seven million, dog. We got like a decade until the Quakes get something. We else. were bottom of the table before we could spend that. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, Marco Royce would do this league a lot of good. He is towards the end of his career, but he's still got a couple years in those legs. Still class, a class, class. player. That yeah. dude, you put him in the middle, and he'll he'll move stuff around. Va a jugar bien. Reparte el queso. Va a repartir el queso bien. And then he'll bring Mario Gotze, his homie. Yes. He'll bring Lewandowski. Jeez. Oh, bro, imagine we get old Borussia Dortmund on one squad. That'd be crazy. We got the ex-Barcelona team. Versus the ex Borussia Dortmund. Partido de leyendas right there. Partido de leyendas. <laughs> and the Quakes con los que puedo. <laughs> pues, tráiganse, pues no sea la trophy's back. Damn. I'm wondering now if there's another team in Europe that, like, back in the day that we can reunite and they can kill it. Who, who, what other team is really, like, a Southampton, <laughs> Sadio Mane, and no, 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 Virgil no. van Dijk was there too, no? No, it seems like the the French are in LAFC right now. 
yeah. with uh, Giroud French coming, and Luego yeah. Lloris is there. Um, they sh- you know, an MLS, it's way past it, but they should have done it. MLS team should have just reunited the Chilean 2016 squad. Alexis Sanchez, uh, Vidal. Vidal. You could have, they could have afforded that. Yeah, MLS, re- make these super teams. Hell Bring yeah. everyone here that was on a squad together. Reunite them. And then come play at Levi's. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your highlight. Let's go. All right, folks. Lastly, in top news, David Moyes has been announced that he's leaving at the end of the season, apparently amicably. But we all know that boat has been sinking. Yeah, it's been tough. Midway through the season, there was no losses with Edson on the field. And now they've lost like four out of like their last five. They haven't been great lately. Um, the rumor is that Julian Lopetegui, who we had the hardest time announcing his name when he was at Wolves. Yeah. Which is super interesting because, uh, what's his name? Uh, David Moyes brought in some good pieces. They brought in uh, Kudus. From yeah. Ajax, they brought in Edson. Uh, Edson. Jared Bowen has been doing really well. It's like, what's what's going on? Yeah, like they should be doing better than what they are. Yeah, and maybe that's what it is, right? Maybe they got the most out of the coach, which we see that happening often. And then they're just like, you know what? Ya dice lo que puedes dar. Thank Muchas you. Gracias. Thank you for what you did. Pero la madriza que te dio el Chelsea, no te yeah, la perdonamos. Five zero versus Chelsea. God damn. But yeah, West Ham has lost. Uh, f- they haven't. W- they've only won one game in their last five. Yeah, so that's a bit rough. Uh, and that, if you're not top of the league, they were close to fighting the top eight, top six. Uh, but that just puts you in the dirt, and then maybe ownership's just like, you know what, mejor Lopetegui, who didn't do so well at Wolves. Nah, he didn't do so well at Wolves. He did pretty good at Sevilla, no? Yeah, I think he t- he took them to a final. Yeah, that's when uh. When they were pretty hot with uh, Tecatito there, so they did good. I don't know. It, sometimes they just recycle these coaches, right? Coaches, yeah. But a ver qué, a ver qué pasa. Hopefully he keeps my Edson in there. Doesn't take him out. I know he did uh, Raul Jimenez a yeah. bit dirty back in at Wolves. but Third team in a row with Mexicans. Like we said, Tecatito and then Raul Jimenez. But basically shunned Raul Jimenez uh, trying to come back from his injury. Now he gets an Edson. And that's interesting. Like, you know, you got to impress the new coach, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like Edson at the six is one of those positions where it's just like, si no te quiere, va a traer a uno de sus favoritos, right? He'll bring a, if he was at Wolves, maybe he'll bring Mateus Nunes, who's at uh, City, or he'll bring Pablo Sarabia from Wolves or something. And then, nah, Edson's and then he benches good. Edson. Fuck. Edson's way too Mexicans good. will hate him forever. We are rid of, uh-uh. Yeah, and Mexicans would hate him. Yeah, I think Edson is one of those untouchables. Yeah, he has to be Jared Bowen, uh, Kudos, como dijimos, Areola. Um, they, they might need a forward, a better forward. Porque Michael Antonio is not. Jared Bowen. Well, see, pero put Jared Bowen. Wing. Necesitas wing. otro. Pues. Kudos, and then trae otro cabrón. Otro Lucas cabrón. Paqueta. He, they uh, should be cooking. They should be kicking. Rumor is Paqueta. he's going to city. No, City, ya, yeah. que tanto quieren, cabrón. Hey, hijack it, take him to Arsenal. Bro, if City doesn't win league, they're going to buy everything. All right, let's move on to the Champions League, where City is not. <laughs> uh, Dortmund. I'm dead. Now Sir- there's Arsenal. <laughs> huh? Now there's Arsenal. ¿Y qué? <laughs> is Newcastle? I'm dead. ¿Y qué? Sí, Me dejas hacer this. transition o no, cabrón. <laughs> Dortmund surprised all of us, and they eliminated Not PSG. me. I called them out. I you said did. they were going to win. You, d- you even said hot take, too. So, I mean. Clip that. Yeah. Run it back. Maybe I will run it back. <laughs> but I said that PSG would win. Even after they were down, I said they'll come back in Paris. But or no. Hummels had a whole different idea. Yeah. That Matt dude, uh, Hummels. Matt Hummels, he was just like. Que digo, Osvaldo Alanis. Yeah, they're twins, huh? <laughs> yeah. Nope. I mean, it was a pretty easy goal, right? You don't watch that back post. You put the smallest guy on the field to mark the tallest guy on the field. Your center defender, who you know that he's va bien arriba, va bien en el aire. He's a good header. Yeah, and he he buried it. He put a who was marking amazing, it? For who it was, but uh, they did one of those trenecitos, right? So like you don't know who you're gonna mark, and then uh, he ended up getting like a Fabian Fabian Ruiz or somebody shorter, and he just went right over. Boom. Yeah, and that's, that's all you right. need, right? That's what Dortmund needs. One goal. And then they closed up. And they, they pulled uh, they around closed Madrid up uh, against City. No, uh, yeah, Dortmund had a game plan going in. Uh, 
PSG hit the post like three times, three, four times. That full Vitinha's got a rocket. Vitinha but let's remember, shot. folks, if you hit the woodwork, it's not a shot on goal. Damn, yeah, that's that. Close, but no cigar. Okay? Got to get it on frame. <laughs> betting, guys. Yeah, get it on. I know for real. Get it on frame is what I think uh, Luis Enrico is probably telling his team, like, cabrones, a la meta. Did you see his interview before the game? No, what do you do? He's like, mañana perdamos o ganamos, de tomo sale el sol. Vamos a tomar aire y vamos a estar bien. It's like, bro, you don't say that right before. A that's what game. you say when you're about to lose your job. Yeah, that's when you say when you've lost the game. Mañana nos recuperaremos y todavía va a salir el sol. Y no pasa nada. Pues, como, oh. Because they win League One so easy, I mean, you could be happy. But my guy, everyone's expecting you to move on. Right, we kept making the jokes about like Mbappe now without a Messi, without a Neymar, killing it. Right, but acabo igual. No, acabo igual. No, it's a PSG. They weren't gonna score. Like you can tell the whole game they would hit the post, and I was like, nah, these guys are just. Ni con no, otra mitad, no, dos no, mitades, no, no, no hombre, no iban a meter gol. Ni que meti, trajeron de regreso a Messi, no iban a meter oh, gol. For real. It M just M wasn't there. Mbappe day. just couldn't. Put it away. He got the the nice floater in the box where he chipped. He fucking hacked at it and it bounced over. I was like, my guy, where's Lito Mbappe? That'll just fucking boom. Yeah. En la pura esquinita. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to, to PSG. It's just el cuento de nunca acabar que ellos siempre, they're so close that they can't get over. It's like Mexico. Jugaron como nunca, perdieron como siempre. For real. That, like the that same battle. Story. Dembele with the dude on loan from uh, Chelsea on the side was oh, solid. Fuck. What's his name? Contra Matson, who was on loan from Chelsea, it was a solid battle. Um, Matson got the best of him in the match, obviously, right? Well, he got he didn't Dembele, and he was also tracking down at times uh, Hakimi. Yeah, because Hakimi was just flying up and down that that right side. Yeah, that dude, Hakimi. Arsenal needs to come a call and Hakimi go sign that full man. He's wasting his career at PSG because they, they just don't win anything. Like imagine him at a Arsenal. Imagine him at a at a Newcastle. <laughs> hey, I no, I mean, like PSG, they're just not gonna. That's in Trippier's win. position, my guy. Nah, pinche Trippier is la caga. No, you <laughs> anda lastimado, like sí, anda lastimado. Lleva todo el año. No, yeah. but yeah, um, they kept hitting, hitting the post. They kept barely missing, but no caía. And it's the the typical story. Dortmund puts one away, and pff, papita, vámonos, vámonos a Wembley. Uh, Wembley. Beautiful. I uh, surprised everybody, but we all shut our we all got our mouths shut. Except for you. Except because you guessed Except it right. Yeah. Let's go. Uh do you think Mbappe is ready to leave? They yeah. asked him. Yeah. He's they asked him in an interview, Are you uh are you gonna be supporting Madrid tomorrow? And I was like, Hijo tu perra madre, who the fuck taught you how to interview? That's a crazy interview question. And he walked off. Pissed. <laughs> I'm like, my guy. Dude, Por favor, it ten respeto. It was worth the shot. It was it worth, was the, worth shit the shot. shot. Yeah, Cabron, was, ten respeto. It was, it was worth it, dude. Imagine if you would have said yes, bro. He's lucky we're not in Liga Mekis or else. Cuatemoc la garra de las greñas de un pinche sape. Yeah, dude. That's crazy. That's a crazy question. Oh, man. Like, uh, he and walked you, off. And then, y lo preguntan que why do players get mad? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> My God, that's like a little bit personal. Like, uh, was this in France after the game, or when was this? It's like right, like in the hallways after the game, like, <laughs> like after you get dressed and come out. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead, dude. I thought it was like the next morning, like today. This no morning. way, it was oh. there. It was like right after. No, todavía no caliente. Sí, todavía caliente. No, that was a crazy question. No le va a ser como el actor el ese de they asked him about his uh. The, the fool that smacked the the reporter in the uh, oh, red carpet. Oh, CCC. It's not Fredo Adame. I forgot uh, what his name is. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. He looks hella. And man. then Eugenio de Reyes is right next to him. He's like, cabrón. Um, or like a uh, fucking uh, El Tuca when he's like, esta es mi casa. Que esta es mi capa. Casa y me hago respetar. Yeah. All right, folks. So let's move on to the other one. Um, so Dorfman gets to move on to Wembley. And... Uh, they're waiting, they're waiting, and they're going to get Real Madrid. Uh, Real Madrid moves on. They beat Bayern Munich today with a late match comeback a la Madrid. A la Madrid. Hey, you get, oh, what, no, you get what I did right hey, there? Hey, 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 I got to say hey, a la Madrid. Uh, typical Madrid, right? Alfonso Davies got a banger of a goal for some reason. Tuchel didn't want to play him, 
So he came off the bench, and I'm like, my guy, the titular. Serge Canabri. Yeah. Se chingo. Se chingo. So he puts Davies more offensive, right? He's not a winger. He was full. He was in a, a back, right? He was a full on winger at Tacante, which was beautiful. Yeah. Um, a little white uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. He used to play that position back in. There's a famous video of him just running down the pitch a little bail, just going the lengthways against uh, Las Vegas Lights. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's no stranger to that position. And you can tell right away that his instructions were get behind Carla. Get behind. Carvajal, mm -hmm. and win that space. Just roast that fool. And man was just speeding up and down the field. Pero pinche Harry Kane siempre les da una pinche piedra. <laughs> no, Harry Kane. I almost spit out my drink. Dude, the, for most of the game, other than the goal, Bayern Munich could just not get a, a through ball or a good pass or a good touch in the final third. For real. And it was so frustrating, especially seeing Harry Kane hold up the ball beautifully and then just not be able to get that pass away. And it's like, Harry Kane is already zooming by. Yes, away la manda para fuera. But yeah, I mean, other than like uh, Falls on Davies, beautiful goal, brings it in to his weak foot, quote unquote, and then scores a bang. Well, he had to do it himself, right? Because they just weren't figuring it out. And then El Solito breaks in. Yeah, they pushed him onto his weak foot. And he's like, okay, it's my strong foot. Let me get Let's this go. away and we'll see what happens. Golazo, güey. Con la clavo. Bonito, uh, yeah. But then ultimately, Bayern didn't have much concrete outside of that, right? And then they put Jose Lu in, el talisman. The killer. The killer, again, going off of the unlikeliest of heroes, right? And that, it was so funny because it was off of like a corner kick or, or like a free kick in the box. So you had Rudiger and um, Nacho. Nacho gets the uh, re the rebound, passes it to Rudiger out wide, and then he puts a beautiful cross for Jose Lu. And it's like you're two center backs and then an unlikely hero. That's the one that got called off sides, right? And then they ended up giving yeah, it to them. Yeah, that was the second one. Because the first one, Neuer fucked up. Neuer got a uh, spat one out, that, the Vinny shot, right? He spat it right in front. It, it almost hit his shoulder, right? He probably he tried just, to. He just caught it wrong. He tried to tell me it or chest it, it right? Chest it and like bounced off his chest. And it's like he had a beautiful game all night. He all did. All like 80 minutes. And like the last 10, you like give one away. You mentioned it in the Discord from a goalie's perspective, right? How rough it is to have 80 minutes of an amazing match. And then at the end of it, do something that just completely fucks it up. It's just you give one away and all of the work you've done goes down the drain. And it's tough because, like, as a defender, you think your keeper is 100% solid. You have the best keeper in the world, one of the best keepers of all time. This fool is going to eat that shit up or hit it somewhere where nobody can get it. Mm -hmm. Pero también, a la misma vez, sometimes that security does you dirty because him spitting that out right in front, as a defender, if you know your keeper sucks, you got you to gotta be there first before the defender, yeah. right? And th he gets beat. By Jose Lu, who's not the fastest of players, <laughs> not the youngest of players, right? Yeah. Uh, and he's able to get that first touch through and, and get a shot on goal and, and puts it away, yeah. right? So as a defender, like, you're not 100% out of the blame because you could have been there. You should have been there to help out your keeper. But then the keeper is the one that ultimately, ahí, pues ahí la dejó, güey. Dios easy. Oportunidad. Too easy. Like, yeah. es medio gol. Yeah, and one thing I want to like really emphasize about Real Madrid is their mentality going into games like this where there's like single elimination rounds. Like mm -hmm. it's this game, you're coming in with a two to two tie and it's like, you got to score more goals than the other team. And since the beginning, you can tell that the team was just aggressive in any way they could. It's like the line is here and they were just so close to it being a foul, but not really. And that's how I got Rudiger hugging Harry Kane or uh, Mendy, doing a little flicks or, like, uh, bugging um, Leroy Sané. Mm -hmm. Leroy Sané was getting manhandled, like, the first 10, 15 minutes because um, Mendy was setting the tone. Yep. Same thing with Valverde. Same thing with um, Carvajal. It's like there's a moment where Carvajal pushes down Harry Kane when he's already on the floor saying, you're not playing it fast. Chinga tu madre. Let's go. Y es una mentalidad cabrona que that's how you win games. Yeah, they know how to win the games. They know how to not lose games is, yeah. I think, a good way to put it. Um, they have this mentality where you get scored on in the 60-something-th minute, and guess what? You're unfazed, and you're like, 
guys, we're going to score at least one and we're probably going to win it. So se me calman, cabrones, ¿verdad? Yeah. And you could feel it. Even though they were up 1-0, Madrid's not out, no. right? You're in the 80th minute. You start making subs and you're just like, okay, who, who's coming in to score that goal, right? And that's in the back of your mind. And as players, you can tell that they ultimately think they're not going to lose. Yeah. Like they're going to figure out a way. And they did. And it's always that random person that you can think of. Right. I thought it was going to be Brahim Diaz making the difference when he came been on in. fire, right? Yeah. But Jose Lu out of nowhere coming in with a brace puts them through. And we called it out last week too when um, that young kid, it was his first game. Arda Guler. Arda Guler. He scored a debut yeah, he scored game, a debut goal. And that's how they won. Beautiful. Yeah. It's like it's the whole organization. It's not just the 11 starting players. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit of controversy. Uh, Thomas Tuchel is already getting torched on social media. Why? Because he takes out one of the best forwards in the world at the moment, Harry Kane, in the 85th minute, and then they get scored on in the 88th, and then they get scored on in in, uh, in the additional time. Uh, a lot of people questioning him, why do you take out your one of your best players, probably your best player, who can hold the play, who can waste time for you, who's been in big moments in big leagues like the Premier League and in Champions League. Why take out that player uh, when you're going to need them just in case, right? And then you get scored on twice. You really need a good forward at that point. You get scored on once, you need a forward. You need a penalty kick taker if you guys go to extra time, right? Yeah. It was a high risk to take out such a good player, even though he's not doing that great. Uh, but, yeah, Thomas Tuchel is hearing it now. People are saying if you leave him in, you have a much better chance. Why risk and try to play it safe? Yeah, I mean, hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? Mm-hmm. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty, but sometimes you got to leave your best players out there. But the ca- the the devil's advocate is that Borussia Dortmund did that, right? They subbed out players to put in more defenders, and it's like it worked out for them. So sometimes it does work. Yeah, out. naturally you think it's it, supposed to help you yeah. out, right? But the moment that you get scored on once and it's tied. That completely goes out the window, and you're already completely wrong because you're defensively stanced for the rest of the time, including extra time, yeah. right? And that's what sucks is that you're taking out your best player. You put Chupo Moting on, who's a striker too, but it's just not the same thing. No, It's not the same thing, right? He's not fast enough. He's not strong enough. So at like, the end of the day, in the hindsight, we can look at it, and everyone is looking at it as like, if you were hungry enough to win this match, you leave your best player, even if they're dead tired. Yeah. I bet you they don't want to come out. Yeah. Coming out versus ensuring the win. I bet you they want to stay on. And so you're going to get questioned for it, especially because you got eliminated. Yeah. It will always be the question of like, if he stays in, can they waste the time, hold up play, score another one? He's a good header, or maybe he would have cleared it. Exactly. Like, muchas cosas. He could have been in the box and. Fucking worked it out for them. Pero pues no se pudo, no se, no pasó, and now they're going home. Yeah. Just sucks. I mean, it was a good game. It was a very good match. Uh, Even the CBS sports people were, like, speechless after. It was an amazing match. We're getting more and more great matches uh, in this Champions League. I think this has been one of the top overall Champions Leagues in a while. Um, The other controversy that happened in this match Right at the whistle, <laughs> right before the whistle, uh, there's a uh, a play a play on goal. Uh, they get uh, Bayern gets a cross in, uh, kind of gets a couple of rebounds. It falls to Delete, and he has a strike on it. It goes in the goal, but guess what happened? The linesman had already raised a flag. The ref had already marked offsides because the linesman raised raised the flag. And uh, apparently they marked this offsides that was very close, which we know that they're just not doing anymore. They're not marking these that are very close immediately. They allow the play to happen, and then they figure it out later. But in this case, because the linesman raised his flag, the ref marked whatever he had to mark. He blew the whistle, blew the play dead. So that shot by the lead didn't count at all. There is no oh, VAR. That's what happened. Yeah, there isn't. No, yeah, there is no VAR that can check because it didn't end up in in goal. It ended up with the ref marking dead play. So there is no reverting. There is no oh, 
yeah, yeah, take it back, and the shot was good. No, because you blew it dead, it's over. Because he blew it before the league got the shot away. Yep. Because he blew it at through. any point before the ball was in goal. It wow. didn't it didn't matter. He Dang. had to the only way that that goal would have counted is if the ref just would not have blown the whistle at all. And the or, what, or after it was in the net. Yeah, which is what normal what it is now. The rule like the, what everyone is doing Damn. is they allow the play to happen, right? Sometimes they're hell offsides and they let it happen, right? And then they figure it out later and then all the people the players will complain like, "Hey, why didn't you mark it earlier? I could have, I ran so much and I could have gotten injured, right?" But that's what they're doing. They're allowing it to happen. But this one, they did not. That's crazy. The ref, man. the linesman, got, I, I, in my opinion, got trigger happy. He just yeah. lifted that thing up, <laughs> and then the ref sees the linesman. He has to, he has to mark it, or else he's kind of like ignoring his linesman, right? Um, and apparently, Thomas Tuchel came out after the match and said that. Uh, the linesman apologized. Apologized. I don't know if he <laughs> actually did that, but apparently, uh, Tuchel is saying that uh, he's come out and said that it was wrong. Which I mean, it makes sense, right? Because of what we just explained, he, it should have been let go. Um, and then after we can draw the he lines, figured out on VAR, we can check it and be like, all right, he was outside. It just happened so recent that I haven't seen people do like their own drawings on social media or anything, or any of those pages that like think they're official that that'll draw it up. To me, it looks like he's an, an inch or two offsides, like a hair, yeah, a hair offsides. It would be good for everyone's sanity if they figure that out and confirm it. Yeah, but I think it, a lot of people will not get over the fact that. They blew that call way too early. It, it, they should have let the play end. It ends in goal. Let them celebrate. But ref, go check it. Uh, prove otherwise that it's it is a pen, uh, it is an offsides or it's not an offsides, and then people will agree with it a little bit more. But now everyone's pissed because they're like, "Damn, Real Madrid yeah. is getting that help." They don't. It just looks worse for Real Madrid. Like they've been throughout the season. A lot of people have been complaining that they get. Favorite additional season, help, yeah. Additional help, thirteen men, right? Uh, playing, and this just doesn't help. It doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical that what should have happened. So it's crazy for it to happen at that point, and it causes an elimination. Yeah, that it direct it, elim- elimination. Yeah, yeah, it basically d- negated a goal. It's crazy. Like, yeah. It just raises so many more questions. People are just like, no, 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 fuck this shit. It's rigged. It's yeah. over. And, I mean, what can the refs do? We've seen it in the EPL, right? Uh, that that's come out complaining about a lot of calls, some of them leading directly to goals or to taking points. away goals, yeah. taking away points in a race, in a tight race. Uh, but we've seen it. They come out and they apologize, but they you can't replay it. No, you can't replay it. You can't do anything You can't about give it. that goal back. Over. It's over. Yeah. A llorar, no más. Linesman, just relax a little bit. Byron, you guys have won enough. So has Real Madrid. I know. It's Real Madrid, is, fairness, guys, Real Madrid has won a lot. <laughs> and it doesn't take away with, with the attitude that they played, right? Yeah. It just sucks that Byron got like cheated. Yeah, but no, my Mr. Mueller was about to eat that full live. Uh, yeah, Mueller has been crazy. Everybody um, was In yelling. the transmission, they were saying that he was almost the assistant coach this game. Because Tuchel was talking to him a lot while he was on the bench. Um, and He's like, wait, ¿qué hago? Wait, wait, este, ¿qué tal si pongo a Davies aquí? ¿Tú qué crees? He's like, yeah. Um, pero that he's been really self-critical of the players, of uh, coaching, of himself. Um, so I think it's... Well, he's out the door re- already, no? As soon as he retires, I'm sure he'll be coaching. We'll be seeing oh, him yeah. coaching all over the world or for Germany. Or, I bet. But he was pissed this game, and right, rightfully so. Yeah, they sh- the refs kind of did them dirty. Who knows what have hap- what would have happened? But we we'll, what we do know that happened is that Real Madrid moved on with that. So some craziness is happening there, folks. As we expect in Champions League, right? The greatest tournament in the world, club level. Let's go. All right, let's move it on to some of the leagues. We had EPL over the weekend. My Arsenal keeps their one point lead over Manchester City. They beat Bournemouth. Three to zero, um, that was as good as they could have done to try to keep that goal differential difference between City right keeps their hopes up. City beat Wolves five to one. Holland put in a shift. What do you do? Four, three, two penalties, no? 
Yeah. God damn it, dude. I didn't have Holland on my team. Everyone else had Holland I don't, I on their team, Holland. and I didn't have him in my fucking fantasy team. And now everyone's beating me. Fuck. Hey, you've me been off. struggling in FPL these past few weeks. I've been struggling in the bud- in the draft one, yeah, with the actual teams. Allah, ma. He got four. Four, papa. The, the goal by Huang killed me. Pep and the team was like, hey, Holland's got to get that golden boot. It's a yeah. little too close. With Ollie Watkins. Let's go. Uh, so now he has a like a three or four goal lead. So it's going to get. He's got 25 goals in 28 matches. Five assists. Dios mio. No, that's the goal machine. That cabron. Uh, in other news, Tottenham. They lost 4-2 to two to Liverpool. They're tottenham it up. Let's go. They were in Champions League. They've lost four in a row. <laughs> and now they're eliminated from Champions League. No, but if I've ever heard anything, Tottenham. Let's go, Aston Villa. That's what it is. They play Aston Villa next, okay? No, I'm saying oh, that they, they made it into in. the top four, yeah. Yeah. Let's start cabron. Yeah, is the top four set now? Basically, no? Uh, there's two weeks left. Yeah, that's set. It's over. Damn, Aston Villa in Champions League. Uh, Premier League was trying to fight for that coefficient to give them the fifth spot. But because of their performance in Champions League, your Newcastle United. Yo, actually, let me cook here. Hey. I know Newcastle got out of the, the group, but ni, that was the group of death. Ni jugaron. And two of the the two que pasaron de ese grupo were semifinalists of Champions League, PSG and Dortmund. Dortmund's in the final now. Y que? Que Those were surprises, though. <sighs> no, but, I mean, ni participation trophy a roto vinche in the Newcastle way. So, in the tuyo tampoco. Hey, we made it. We made it ¿A through. Y el dinero que les dan, les dan un chingo de dinero ah, just for making it out. Bro. The Newcastle hasta salieron debiendo, yo creo. Because uh, how much they had to pay Better for everything. Next year. Better the next year. What is next year? We're gonna Newcastle's have a good, not in. Good transfer season. Newcastle's not in champions. Champ top four next season. Watch. That's, no. Hot take. You guys heard it here first. That's what, we, that's what you thought of this year. <laughs> <laughs> no. No pasó. But yeah, we all know we're all watching that race at the top. Arsenal versus City. A ver cómo acaba. Liverpool is basically out of it. Things are getting solidified. Hey, we're in Europa League next season. Are you guys? We're sixth. Oh, dang. Pretty sure that's Europa. That's conference. No puede ser. Europa yeah. Conference League qualification. Yeah. What? Damn. Damn. They're going to be struggling con los pobrecitos over there. <laughs> With AEK Athens. With hey, don't do our boys like that, bro. At con least they're in European. Con Sparta Prague. Vamos on that. <laughs> <laughs> con <laughs> chef, <laughs> Sheriff. Yeah, con Sheriff SSK Moscú. Sí. A estar, okay. cabrón. Versus uh, Luis Chavez. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, yeah, so things are wrapping up in the Premier League. Let's move on to La Liga where they are wrapped up because Girona, they beat uh, Barcelona 4-2 to two and they sentenced them to death. Not only did they give... Real Madrid, the title with that win over Barcelona, but they also moved themselves above Barcelona. They're one point ahead of Barcelona now after winning 4-2. to two. I'm so mad because Barcelona started off winning that game, and then they just had a sloppy, sloppy mistake that cost them. They just would give the ball in the back, would lose it. Este Cristian Porto had a banger of a goal, and then he got a brace, and then he set up a third one. I was like, bro, like... He already knows City was like, hey, ¿Quién es ese güey? Es a ver, dame sus a ver. detalles. A ver. We uh, bought him. <laughs> Are you guys bought him? A poco. We la, bought him. De la academia. ¿Dónde es? We bought him. ¿Y no lo quisimos? No, no hombre. Tráemelo para acá. Tráemelo. Uh, but yeah, with that, Girona, uh, they solidified themselves in Champions League. But then they kind of don't. Because yeah. you can only have, when you're a multipropiedad owner, you can only have one team in Champions League. So they're in those spots, but I think they give up their spot um, yeah. because City City Group will probably take Manchester City making it the champions. Not only will they take their players, they'll also take their place. They're going to take their place. Damn, that's rough. Pero, pues, I mean, ¿qué van a pensar? Pero, hey, maybe next season you guys win the... But they're going to be in Europa. They're going to be in Europa. Or win Europa. Andale. Va a estar bueno. I wonder if that means Athletic Club is in fifth right now, if they get in top four technically. Uh, Real Madrid, they're La Liga champions, as I mentioned. Uh, do you see any hope for Barcelona next season? Real Madrid is rumored oh, to be bringing an Alfonso Davies otra vez every transfer season. A Mbappe. ¿Quién más? 
that's it, no? There's rumor for another mid for a uh, Tony Cruz. Oh, Florian Wirtz. Oh, shit. From Bayer Leverkusen. Florian Wirtz. Damn, he's leaving uh, Alonso, Xavi Alonso. I mean, Alonso, they're going to completely dismantle him. Dismantle. They're going to sell the team. They're going to be like. I don't see help for Barcelona next season. No? No, it's not at all. Cosa. Uh, it's Real Madrid at the end of the day. I, it's because just the financial situation uh, that Barcelona's in, and I feel like the kids are just a bit too young still. It's like we're n- not there yet. Puede que, pero no creo que. Lewandowski's not getting any younger. Is, they're going to have enough juice. I don't think Xavi is going to have an amazing, amazing season like he did that first season he was there where he surprised people and won it. But Xavi's just got a bank on champions. That they make it further for, yeah. or as far and get them that money, right? Yeah. A ver que. Esta cabrona cosa, man. Uh, in the Netherlands, quickly we'll go over that. Uh, Santi broke his drought. He scored a brace, scored a PK, and then he scored like a little rebote in. Ah, uh, él hizo right. la jugada. Si sí fue medio rebote, pero yeah. he tried it that way. Pero pues es la suerte del delantero, sí. right? So he's getting that, that little touch back to him. Uh, he needed these goals. He fir- The first one was the penalty, right? He took the penalty because he wasn't like the prolific penalty goal scorer. Um, and now that he did, he's getting that confidence everywhere. Uh, and it's perfect timing because it's rumored that uh, he might go to Tottenham where he went to a ma- he went to the North London Derby, yep. right? There's rumors for an AC Milan to CONCACAF FC. That'd be good. I want rumors to Liverpool. If they're getting rid of Darwizi, like the rumor is that he's leaving. <laughs> you know, hella people have been roasting, uh, not roasting, but uh, that Benfica did everybody dirty because they got so much money for Gonzalo Ramos to PSG, yeah, who shat the bed Fucking sucks, this man. last round. And then man. Darwin Nunez, they got like an arm and a leg for him. Yeah. So they're like, bro, these fools be swindling. They be cooking, though, whenever they're there. Whenever they're at Benfica, they be doing really well. True. Else. True, true. Um, but, yeah, it'd be good to see him at AC Milan um, or at Liverpool. Tottenham would be good, too, but we just know Tottenham don't want to And we want my boy to be happy. I don't want him stressed. Yeah. Or he can pull out Harry Kane, go there, and then go somewhere else. And then not win anywhere else. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe don't go there. No, I, You'll get cursed. I think ideally it'd be it'd be dope if we went to AC Milan and he he helped them get back to the top of the league, right? Yeah. If they could. It would be dope. Uh PSV, they officially made themselves Yassi champions. So everyone was turning up. Um this is another CONCACAF FC, right? Chuki, Tillman, everybody turning up together. Yeah, I saw a video of uh Tillman Looking for Chucky. He's all with drunk, the, huh? With the Mexico flag. Yeah. I was like, hey, okay, they homies. But they homies. Back <laughs> over here, cuando se enfrenten ahí, sí, a putazos, eh? For real, they be talking but, to hell. So. Yeah, but He was no, drunk as fuck. He was. He was like, ahora. On the boy. On the chingato. He eventually went back the way he came from, because he was just, <laughs> he didn't know where he was, probably. Uh, but there was also a video of him uh, smoking a cigar. I don't know. I did see a lot of Twitter people being like, my God, you're a professional athlete. You can't be smoking. Yeah. Like si supieran. No. Bro, they're all be smo- they all be smoking cigarettes. Cigarettes. Putting those pouches in their teeth with the nicotine. Yeah. Um, and some be players to be doing worse. Like, no manches. Acabo de ganar. He's doing really well on the field. Let my man celebrate. Yeah, bro. I mean, we've seen pictures of, like, Jamie Vardy, like, drinking a beer in the locker, smoking, wherever, like, bro. Jack they, Grealish was drunk, blacked out when he won uh, Champions League. Yeah, they like all us. drink. They all smoke. Uh, Perdón that you're a USMNT fan and you want your boy to be hella perfect, uh, pero va a tomar. Burrito, he's yeah, a he's going to fucking do. They're going to have fun. They just won. Déjalo. Yeah. Que celebre. Young, que celebre. Sí, have a good time. No, pero sí, they they had a good time because they won it all. But next year, they'll probably win it again. I'm just gonna lie. I wasn't yeah. gonna lie because I was gonna say Santi will bring them back. But no, Feyenoord is gonna go into a bit of a rebuild, in yeah. my opinion. So now they're letting go of their coach. Coach is going somewhere to Liverpool, and then Santi may be going somewhere else too. ¿Con quién se van a quedar? 
con las manos vacías los de, con mucho dinero pero con mucho dinero even hey. Arne Slot right leaving so they're gonna yeah. he's gonna be the like highest transfer for a uh, coach damn I think it was that's like crazy that million. we're cooking with coaches now I see um, no but then if they bring like a chiquito who's rumored right uh, Fidel Ambriz somebody from Mexico they're gonna show up and they're like what the fuck we're back to the middle of the table <laughs> like yeah, shit rough I mean, in the Dutch league, it's hard to be middle, lower table. Like, you have to try to suck. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how, like, uh, Ajax, Ajax was struggling this Ajax season, Ajax. right? Yeah. My guys, if you watch the lower table teams, they're, like, worse than MLS, worse like, than the league ahead, of teams. No, I'm his way. They suck. Yeah. They're terrible. That's I, why I, I was so surprised when Groningen went down to second division. With Pepe, it's like, bro, like, you guys really going down? I thought you guys were better than that. Yeah, it's, it's a struggle sometimes, apparently. Cool. Let's bring it over to La Bundesliga. We all know it's all Jover there. So just a little note that we want to touch on is that Bayer Leverkusen is still undefeated. 5-1, to one, they beat Frankfurt, and they extend their streak to 48 games unbeaten. Oh, my means. Juegan solo. calendar year. That's crazy. That's difficult in the Bundesliga way. It's not the Dutch league. <laughs> Like, no, I mean, even Real Madrid, they're really good, and they only lost two games this season. Still, Bayern Leverkusen, yeah. 48 games unbeaten. You, especially if you face Bayern Munich twice. You face Dortmund. Dortmund. Stuttgart was r really good this season. Even, like, uh, Red Bull, Leipzig, they're usually really good. Yep. Um, Stadura, um, they equaled Benfica's record from the 60s with 48 games unbeaten, to be exact. And they play Roma tomorrow they to break Roma. that record, which is going to be a tough one. Roma surprises a... us. They got the players that can beat this team. A ver cómo les va. Cool. Let's bring it home to Liga Mekis. Uh, like we said, folks, there wasn't a lot of action because we had to play in. One thing that we want to let you guys know is that we'll have a recap of the season episode pretty soon. We'll talk about the goleadores of the season, who did the best, who do we think, uh, who do we want to shout out. We had a couple of pretty bold statements at the beginning about like the best transfers coming in from the teams, the uh, worst, and the worst. I remember calling out Funes Mori, who did pretty good in the season. We'll have a full length episode on uh, on uh, our thoughts on this season. We had the lowest of goal scorers in a good while. Eight total goals was the goleador. Four players. I think Cardoso did eight goals just in the Liguilla one year. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bruh. <laughs> God damn. And you know you're struggling when uh, Uriel Antuna is at the top. So that's not great. Uh, but what we did have over this past week was playing matches, right? Pachuca got completely run down with games. Yeah. We talked about it last week, how they had beat in your America. Oh. And, then they <laughs> and then they had to go play two days later against Pumas. Uh, it was at home. But unfortunately, they lost in PKs, which is a rough match. But they did have a complete alternate team. Um, Rondon came in the last like 10, 15 minutes. Same with the Chiquito Sanchez. And Rondon in that match came on and he scored two that were marked off sides in that like 30 minutes Both that he played. Beast, yeah. so he was beasting. Nomás, they didn't let him cook. And then uh, two, three days later, three days later on Sunday, yeah. they played Nicaxa fighting for their lives. Put the good guys in. They beat Nicaxa two to one. Yeah, uh, and now they play your America again, way. Yeah, and uh, they don't have Idrisi going into to the America match, so that's gonna be a big plus for America. So yeah, that's a bit of drama, right? He against that Nicax in in that Nicaxa game, he came out as a sub, already having a yellow card, was talking smack with their goalie, the Nicaxa goalie, and a couple of players. It's coming out. As a sub is doing the typical, hey, Glasses. doing his rounds. Hey, yeah, they will applaud me. Blowing kisses. Blowing NBA. kisses. But the thing is, he started doing that towards the keeper and the ref noticed. And what completely threw it over was when the los otros way last in the pedo, right? The Nicaxa players started pushing at him, trying to get at him. And the ref started calming things down. It escalated. Even Guillermo Almada was pissed at him. We're doing these stupid antics, and the ref's like, Tomala. Yeah. While he's sitting down, second yellow, red. Vámonos. A las regaderas. Let's go. Almada was pissed. Almada was heated. Almada yelled at everybody because of Idrisi in the locker room, I bet you. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So Idrisi gets a one game suspension. 
So he will be there uh, for the match in El Azteca, the second the match. Vuelta, yeah. That's all he'll need. I mean, yeah, I called it out in our exclusive episode, but I was saying that uh, Idrisi, you take him out that first game, that's huge for America. That's a big opportunity that they have to capitalize. Porque as soon as he comes back in the Vuelta, he has so much quality that he can cook. He and can I'm, turn that game around just with himself. Just and like I'm that. telling you, que no importa, cabrón. No mames. Put, mete otro morro. Um, 250 jersey number. Numbers. Oh. 1,740. <laughs> van, andar con, van andar como en el DMV, güey. Van a jalar un número. ¿Quién es number 3,495? Te toca. Damn. I bro. saw memes when they were playing Necaxa that they put a bunch of young kids in. They were saying, van a alinear la sub ocho. <laughs> I saw one that said uh, La Sub 12 La Donino Cup Because they do a Donino Cup in Spain And I was like Bro, I don't want this Yeah, dude These guys are pulling Young kids out of nowhere yeah. No man just Who is The person that's supposed to Sub in for Idrisi Is uh, Owen Gonzalez Who was cooking um, Alcantara The The Ex Superstar uh, Sub 20 Center back to Mexico I went and played with, um, he went and played at Port, uh, no, 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 he was playing at Sporting. Yeah, Youth. yeah, I remember that. He was torching him. And I'm like, yeah. bro, el pinche, who's the left back de la América? Este Israel Reyes. Israel Reyes. Que se persina el wey, no mames. No, I mean, yeah, it's going to be really tough for América. These kids ha play so much intensity. Um, they're so fast, hungry. No, no les importa quien esté enfrente de él, puede estar... Messi himself, they'll run him down. Les vale, wey. They don't care. And, uh, yeah, they're going to have to play that way against Columbus, right? They're yeah. going to have to play uh, Pachuca is in the final, and they're going to have these young guns there. Uh, but you think your America will come out on top from the predictions. If you guys, uh, like we, we've been pushing it, if you guys want to see our pick the score lines that we think uh, will happen, jump over to Goals TV. And check out that episode. But you think your America is going to take it? Yeah, I think just the games that Pachuca ha has had over the course of the last two weeks is going to be sad. too much for for them. And America has to have the quality again. Has to have the quality and the the the, the players be at a good level that they need. They should be able to beat this Pachuca. Yeah, the last time they played. Yeah, the last time uh, everybody was doing bad, right? Your boy uh, Quinones. Pero, Quinones was completely shut out. I mean, with our number 10, uh, Diego Valdez, completely shut out. No había ni a quien irle. No había, no. me quería meter yo adentro. No mames. Ya empezó el de las chivas. One minute in. Let's go. Um, I, yeah. I, uh, Vamos I, Toluca. Yeah, oh, no mames. Yeah, right now it's in Guadalajara. So it's going to be good. Let me take a look at this lineup real quick. Who are we cooking? Chicharito started. Damn, that's wild. Oh, my Dios mío. I saw his bald ass head in the damn foot mop. I just, yeah, I, me, I almost got blind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you saw your reflection real quick. No, for real. Damn. They got Castillo in that back line. So they got three, basically three center backs. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, that's going to be a tough series. I have Chivas moving on. I think that they can do it. They can do this. Uh, Toluca is fielding Alexis Vega. To Canelo start, Angulo's in there también too. two ex Chivas players. Jeez. This is going to be a good series. I think my Chivas can come out on top. We'll be right there, ready for the next round. America plays later today, so I'll for sure be watching. Yeah, vámonos a la casa. Vámonos. Vámonos. Vámonos, pues. Oh, the last thing I wanted to call out really quickly um, in MLS way. No mames, pinche Messi, six goal contributions. He's cooking. Five assists and one goal. No manches, wey. Yeah, he's cooking. Tienen que pararlo. Alguien nomás denle en la pura. En las... Sí. Una zancadilla. En las, nala, en las nailas, wey. Sí. Dale. Y vámonos. Yeah. Uh, uno le da una vez, uno le da otra, y todos échese. So. Just, th yeah, three players get yellows. Vámonos. And That's you'll cool. get subbed out in any worry. Luis Suarez at the hat. How trick. many goals does he have? I want to see this. Because I called him out saying he won't get more than 10, which... Retros, yeah, right? you were saying que le iba a faltar aceite a los <laughs> a, la a los a los door hinges. Damn, he has ten goals now and five assists. And you said he wouldn't hit ten goals. I said he wouldn't get past ten. Uh. 
bro, we're like a third yeah. of the way in the Dude. season. He has Jordi. I forgot he had Jordi Alba, Busquets, whole bunch and of Messi. Other, God Messi. damn, chinga madre. Yeah, you got you're getting <laughs> cooked on that way. He's gonna drop thirty two and yeah. va a callar. Um, but dude, five assists is fucking wild. Like this full Messi is not slowing down. His style of game is just made to go into his late thirties beautifully. Tan pegado al pie el balón. He's in a perfect league too to do it. Touch and move, touch and move, touch and move. It's really exposing, in all honesty, Ronaldo for how his game is just not transitioning to old age. Yeah, right. The the lack of touch, the the need for speed. And Messi, he's still hella fast with the ball to that foot. but He's wiser. He knows yeah, he where knew. to be, how, how to touch the ball. Did you see that that play against Mark Anthony K against uh, against uh, from New England Revolution last week? Uh-huh. Uh, they had him as, like, the spy, like the player that has to be on Messi. Oh, yeah, I see. And Messi just, like, walked all the way basically behind everybody. And for one split second, Mark Anthony K se dormió. Yeah. And the ball went straight to Messi, and he one Slots touch. Slots it away. And Busquets was the one that saw that pass, and I was like, oh, you can watch him and be next to him all you want, but that one second that you take your eye off of him, lose concentration, you're done. I bet you the coach pulled that tape up and was like, hey, get, get the Get the chingo te paso, güey. Mira, aquí está. ¿Ves este momento? Es cuando te hiciste pendejo aquí. No, hombre. Vete la... Vete a la banca otra vez, güey. Sí, come banca. All right, folks. Let's bring it on home with our games to watch. All right, games to watch. Let's go. Liga Mekis playoffs is on. I have America against Pachuca. Um, America should be able to get their revenge with the very tired Pachuca in front of them. But we never know. It's intense Pachuca and them kids can pull a fast one again. Matar cabrón. Also in Liga Mekis, I got my Chivas versus Toluca. Alexis Vegas returned to Guadalajara. Uh, it's going to be a revenge game for him, a revenge series for him, also for Chivas players. But I think Chivas will come out on top. In the Premier League, we got Fulham against Manchester City. Can Kite flying instead of practice Fulham beat this Manchester City? Uh, also in Premier League, I got Tottenham versus Manchester City. Uh, for the sake of everybody that isn't a City fan, we need Tottenham to not Tottenham. We need them to come out on top to get a draw do something so we can have a new champion in the Premier League. In the NWSO, we got Orlando Pride against our Bay FC. Our Bay FC have lost four in a row. Can they get back to winning ways? In La Serie de Brasil, I got Atletico Paranense, who's currently in first place versus Palmeira, who's pumping out these superstar kids. Another one rumored to every top team in Europe. Uh, we'll see if Palmeiras can come out on top. All right, folks. Well, that's all that we had for you. Bring us on home, Cesar. Thank you guys for all of you who came out to the tailgate. Stay tuned for many more in the future. And thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah, folks, we appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all in the Discord where we'll keep chatting up about footy. We'll talk soon. Peace. Peace.